Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. So day 10 takes us to the 18th of August and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have said GFS and ECM ensembles. They run to around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFS V2, of course, at the end of the video for September. And I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say that first, a video set is our 6 UK weather forecast. And also really Jamie Freddy, check out those two bids. If you would like to do that, and uh, like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content, thank you so much, everyone, for doing that for Gavis and Weather Vates. Right, we're going to start off with the National Hurricane Centre. So, uh, Triple Storm Dexter has now gone, as we expected he would do so. We have, though, got two interest areas, a yellow X here and the orange X just here. So, uh, well, that's disturbance one. Just a 10% chance of cyclone formation in the next two and seven days. Don't have to worry about that, I don't think. But this one looks a little bit more significant potentially. Disturbance two, a 50% chance of cyclone formation in the next seven days. One to watch, and we'll keep you posted. These are the GFS, know what I'm talking about. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, back from Earth, no school, not now. I've only been doing this for uh, 13 years. You can't expect me to know what the running, running order is. <laughs> Um, no, ladies and gentlemen, back from Earth, no school, not now. I have had a few days off, been ill, though, remember? Latest up, we play back from Earth, no school, dot net, showing uh, low pressure in the North Atlantic. Both the remains of Tropical Storm Dexter there, by the way. And we're bringing a westerly flow. Oh, I'm actually bringing some outbreaks of rain uh, across the country, but that'll be fizzling out as it does so much of the south and east will stay dry today. Central England temperature is currently sitting at 16.2, that's 0.4 of a degree, above 61 to 90, 90 average. It's not been that warm, has it, through the first week of, uh, of uh, August there, as provisional to the uh, 6th of the month. <coughs> So sorry, everyone, we've got a video about several coughs. These are the GFS of red temperature amplification ensembles for the next couple of weeks. On Coventry today, the red line is a 30 year upper red temperature average for cough. Starting off around average at the moment, actually a little bit below, if anything. Of course, it's uh, the sun strong enough by day when it's out to offset that. Uh, next week, both temperatures rocketing upwards. It's going to become very warm to hot. Through the course of next week, notice the thick green line, which is GFS midnight operation road becoming very hot briefly uh, through the middle part of next week. Then there is a cool down, although overall looking pretty warm actually, even into the third week of uh, August. And the uh, thick green line there, the GFS midnight operational run, is very often at the warmest end of the range. There is a lot of scatter, I have to say, once we get into the second half of the August. This period just here, warmer ensemble members up there. Cooler ensemble members down there, so perhaps rather uncertain into second half of August, but definitely a big warm up next week and a few days of what could be really quite hot weather temperatures, at least into the low, if not the mid 30 Celsius. Now, so I've been, I might have said that we're going to have a look at the temperature anomalies. Well, we haven't got those actually. Tropical Tidbits is unresponsive today. Not sure what's happened. Maybe they're upgrading the server or something in preparation for uh, the coming Atlantic uh, hurricane season. Who knows? Anyway, uh, hopefully the, uh, the website will be back tomorrow. So, moving straight on to the chart dates. This is our latest UK Met Euro run. It's looking for midnight on Monday, 11th of August. And we're high and dry, high pressure dominating through much of Europe, bringing lots of dry, very warm to hot weather with it. But high pressure gradually easing its way to the east, lower pressure coming in from off the Atlantic, and that could be the trigger for some thunder through the middle part of next week. Again, it looks like the chop is particularly more, though, to the north and the west, so doubtful how much in um, way of thunderstorms there will be with that in the south and southeast. Then high pressure re-establishes, if anything, in the second half of next week. So this week could be very warm, actually, down in the south. It may never 
cool down around the middle part of the week. And then later in the week, the high pressure gets reinforced again. So uh, that southeast corner could be in for a heat wave next week, actually. Other areas, I think there will be a cool down through the middle part of the week. Uh, I can't looking like this. Again, high pressure bringing lots of warm to hot weather through the early part of next week. Bit of a fungi low across France, a bit different to the UK map. Uh, with that, but that fungi line actually goes off to the low country, so the south manages to avoid that, <laughs> typically. There's a chop in the north, that probably brings some heavy showers of buttersauce into the north, and then the high pressure re-establishes again for the second half of next week, uh, bringing us back uh, to mostly dry and potentially very warm top weather, and I say in the south and southeast it may never really cool down there. And then the KMA looking like that. Again, very warm to hot through the early part of uh, next week. Gradient starting to become slack through the middle part of next week. Could allow for a bit of a fungi breakdown. Uh, and then high pressure rebuilds from the Azores, pushes into uh, Western and Northern Europe there into the second half of uh, August. High pressure going nowhere far. So up to the 20th, we're still high and dry. The north, northeast could be a little bit cooler with winds coming in off the North Sea. But uh, essentially, the main thing about that is like the, the, the dryness. There will be barely any measurable rain there, I think, for much of southern England over the next 10 days at least. Blimey! Well, if you're enjoying the video, please like, share and subscribe. It shows you everyone for doing that. Drop a comment, let's say. What do you think about this and all of our videos and content? And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Web and get them to subscribe too. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, doing that. About 40 subscribers gets us to uh, 20.5k. So if you could give us a sub, that would be incredible. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, this will be a GFS midnight run. It's looking again with high pressure dominating the scene through uh, Monday into Tuesday, Wednesday, drawing up that hot air for itself. Could go a little bit volatile, then a bit of a fungi trough coming in from the north, second half of uh, next week, but the high pressure re-establishes, if anything, uh, around day 10, just maintaining a lot of dry weather, very warm, often quite hot too, low pressure trying to get in from off the Atlantic, in the extended range, so it could turn a bit a bit more uh, showery, especially so for the north, and then the GFS 6Z by comparison, Looks like that. So, again, very warm to hot through the early part of next week. Could be a bit fungy, especially in the north later next week. A bit of change with a 6 8 compared to the midnight run. Brings low pressure in from the Atlantic, so it turns cooler and more showery around days 8, 9, and also 10. Notice this uh, feature just here. That's going to be trouble storm and or hurricane in the North Atlantic. Keep in mind, I say this every year, so uh, it's something that uh, like the, uh, the, the long term at Gals, one of these viewers will uh, be waiting for me to say, so I better say it. Um, uh, keep in mind, when you get these uh, tropical storms and hurricanes moving from the tropical and subtropical Atlantic up into the North Atlantic, it does add a significant amount of uncertainty into the model output. So at this time of the year, August, particularly September, actually it's a very difficult month to forecast um, and sometimes into October as well even around this time of the year model reliability which beyond five days isn't best anyway uh, model, model reliability will reduce will plummet uh, you know due to the just the fact that these uh, models have a job to uh, work out where these storms are going to go and then the downstream impacts of them, if you see what I mean. So always, always, always at this time of year, keep that in mind. Right, well, anyway, the 6 said then sort of try to build high pressure over to the east of the country, low pressure out to the west, looks a little bit showery there. Uh, then heading into Bank Holiday weekend, high pressure re-establishing from the south. By the way, Bank Holiday updates will be starting either over the weekend or into the early part of next week. GM, again, with that high pressure over and to the east of the country on Monday, bring a lot of dry, very warm, hot weather with that carries on to the middle part of next week, might turn a bit fun to in the north and west in particular later next week and then some sort of fungi troughs sort of sitting over the country around days 8, 9 and 10. 
and then uh, the ECM rounds it all off. So once more, we're pulling up those hot, southerly, southeast winds through the earlier part of next week. Then some sort of fungy trough heading in from the Atlantic around Wednesday could trigger some downpours. Uh, higher pressure down to the south later next week, a little bit more low with pressure further north. And then high pressure just basically dominating the weather up to day 10. And even beyond it, we continue to look high and dry there with a big reach through the north of the west of Europe and into the Atlantic as well. That gets us 23rd of August. This is my precipitation forecast based on that uh, ECM run from Tibetia.com up to day 10. So, showery conditions in places, but a lot of dry weather over the uh, next uh, week to 10 days, actually, especially so down in the south and much of southern southeastern England, the Midlands, parts of where southwest and getting no measurable rain at all in the next 10 days there. The northwest is looking a little bit more showery. These are the ops on the table within the east uh, ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. It gets us to the 18th of August. 28 members of the east uh, ensembles have high pressure right over the top country and 23 with low pressure towards Scandinavia, high pressure out to the Atlantic and winds coming in generally westerly uh, direction there. They're both involving high pressure day 10. In two weeks time, these are the options that we've got. It gets us to the 23rd of August, 15 members of the East Sem on some high pressure over to the east of the country. I should draw the wind up from a hot southerly southwesterly direction, 14 with high pressure over and to the east of the coast. That's remain dry, very warm. Nine with high pressure, uh, dominated weather as well. We have got eight with high pressure through northern and west Europe up into the North Atlantic. And we've got five with high pressure a bit further away from us at a trough towards Denmark. So it'll be a bit cooler and a bit more showery. But honestly, at both day 10 and day 14, Looks like the emphasis is very much on high pressure. So, well, a bit uncertain about temperature. That's down to where the high pressure is positioning in the exact wind direction. But certainly looks like very dry conditions for quite a lot of us continue for the next 10 days. But drought goes on. And then finally, CFSB2 for September. So this is the uh, latest 700 millibar height anomaly forecast for September. Uh, remember, these charts change daily. Today's idea, well, has high pressure above average heights of Greenland and Iceland. So, still relatively anticyclonic, um, but not necessarily that warm. We'll probably be bringing the wind from like a northeasterly direction. So, mainly dry, a little bit above average with the temperature, not excessively hot. Um, and no signal for precipitation, but you would have thought a dry month would be likely given that the Atlantic is blocked off, so potentially very dry. We're probably warm, sunny days and cooler, sort of uh, misty nights. A nice sort of gentle transition into early autumn there, perhaps. But of course, it's only one run for the CFS, so uh, time, as ever, will tell. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe. Thanks so much for full team out. Drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell friends about Gals. Don't forget to subscribe too. Thanks so much everyone for doing that tomorrow. We've got a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. There he is. Uh, we've got a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast coming up. There will also uh, be the uh, ECFWF 42 day uh, forecast exclusive for channel members. And of course, a 10 to 14 day as well. Keep checking back to the channel for more. But this one, though, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. And bye for now.